Why, hello there, and welcome to Thursday's Read Aloud. I believe it's Thursday. And yesterday, they went to the Blue Hills, the gang, Arul Mutu Viji and Aruku. And it's a new trash dump that they were finding trash at. And this time, they met a um, group of boys, and one of them, Sridhar, is not very friendly to um, Viji. And the chapter left off with uh, Mutu, Arul, Viji, and Ruku deciding to stop working before that group of boys. So today's chapter is 17, and it's called How You Became a Businesswoman. And I think the you is Ruku. I'll go to the Waste Mart, man, and meet you back at the bridge, Utterwell said. You two should go and see the nice part of the beach with Mutu. Don't you want me to come and keep an eye on the scales to make sure the Waste Mart man doesn't cheat us? Mutu said. I'll be fine, Utterwell insisted. The girls are new to the city, and they deserve to see something. Something nice after all the hard work. So Mutu led us to what he called the rich section of the beach, where we could see sand and dunes instead of trash hills, and my lungs filled with the welcome sense of salt and spray. We strolled along between the road and the beach, past bush carts piled high with corn and peanuts and hawkers selling multicolored Plastic balls and cricket bats, flimsy kites, toys, dolls, pinwheels. Balloon, you said hopefully. Green balloon. Not enough money, I said. Money. You furrowed your brows thoughtfully. Money? You take a balloon from someone, you have to give them money. Mutu tried to explain, as I had tried so many times before. When we take bananas, we give the vendor our money. People sell things for money. Sell necklaces, you said. Money? Yes, I was thrilled you understood. That's how money works. Sell necklaces, you sounded very pleased with yourself. Get money, get balloon. What a good idea. Mutu patted you on the back. We could sell your necklaces. Would anyone buy them, I asked. Mutu gestured at a vendor who was dozing in the shade of a pushcart piled high with the ugliest plastic dolls I had ever seen. If he is trying to sell those, <laughs> why can't we try to sell her jewelry? So the two of you picked a spot on the walkway and arranged the six necklaces that you had finished in a neat line. So remember, she was making necklaces while they were picking trash. Necklaces for sale, Mutu sang out. Pretty bead necklaces. Groups of pedestrians, walkers, bustled past without casting a glance in our direction. I was thinking we should give up when two girls walked by. They carried bags filled with books and looked old enough and well-dressed enough to be in college. How much? One of the girls pointed to a necklace with red beads in which you tied your special loops and knots. Two hundred rupees, Mutu said. I nearly fainted. One, the girl said. Two, Mutu said. Three, you said. Did you just raise the price instead of lowering it? She smiled at you. Three hundred rupees? Four, you said. My sister means 150 rupees, I said. Three, you sang. Three, four, five, six. 
I'd better pay before the price soars ever higher. The girl laughed and then fished in her bag for her money. I can't believe you're actually spending your money on that, the other girl exclaimed. What's 150 rupees, the nice girl said. These kids are cute and the necklaces are pretty. Pretty? You wrapped one around one around a finger and twirled it so the beads caught the sunlight. That's right. The girl slid her necklace over her head. Very pretty. We couldn't have asked for a better model. The girl's golden brown skin set off the beads, making them sparkle even more. We'll send some friends your way, she promised. Sure enough, another college girl came by soon, her pink sari swishing around her heels. There you are. I'll take one. Which one, I asked. Whichever, doesn't matter. 150. I handed over a pink one to match her sari. She gave me 200. I returned the extra 50. Ah, keep it, she said. We settled on 150, I said. We don't need charity. Oh, you're not offended, are you? She sounded worried. I'm sorry. Not offended, I said. In less than an hour, you had sold all but one necklace, and we had earned a small fortune. You're a miracle, Ruku, I said. Your necklaces are worth their weight in gold. Golden roasted corn, Mutu said dreamily. Rutu is a miracle. Kuti, do you know that? Kuti opened his mouth wider like he was grinning in agreement. <laughs> balloon, you said. We walked with you to the balloon stand, though I worried about whether buying a balloon was really such a good idea. Ama had bought us a huge balloon once, and we had had fun with it until it burst and the loud noise set you off. But my worry dwindled when I looked at you. Standing erect, an open mouthed smile spread across your face. You picked out a long bottle green balloon. You give him the money, Ruku. You earned it. I counted out the exact amount and put it in your outstretched palm. You handed over the money. I had never seen you so tall before. That was something. No, that was everything.